came back. I didn't go anywhere. I just walked in the hall, walked back. So you're probably saying, or I don't know what you're saying, but you might be thinking, all right, this is iron free oxide, but that's just aluminum oxide. Like if you have NaCl, you don't call that sodium one chloride. When do you use these Roman numerals? Well, for naming metals to mono, oh, better yet, to non-metals, don't use Roman numerals with one A elements, so don't use them with lithium, sodium, potassium, cesium, rubidium. Don't see them here. So potassium chloride is not potassium one chloride. Two A elements. Don't say calcium two chloride. He's a plus two. He's not going to change that. Just calcium chloride, CaCl2. To cross it down, Ca is a plus two. Chloride is a minus one. CaCl2. One A elements, two A elements. Aluminum, which is always a plus three. Now, this is going to be interesting. Zinc is always a plus two. Zinc is here. There's a reason that zinc doesn't do anything. He's not a real transition element, but we don't want to confuse you in the first year. We just basically say uh, this group is probably where most of the transition elements are. Zinc is a plus two. Treat zinc like it's a 2A element. Okay? Calcium. So if you had zinc chloride, Zn plus 2, Cl minus 1, Zn Cl2, just like CaCl2. Aluminum, zinc, or silver. Silver is going to take a plus 1 in your life, okay? It's taking a plus 2 with fluoride once or something, but silver is going to take a plus 1 in your life. So if I say silver chloride, Ag plus 1, Cl minus 1, AgCl. You don't say silver one chloride. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Now, let's talk about dissolving something in water, something that comes up with that. Let's say I have sodium chloride, NaCl solid. I want to dissolve it. The ions break up. You've seen table salt. It breaks up like you would not believe in water. But it's breaking up to its ions. Do you show water on both sides? Oh, I don't think so. You basically say, what ion comes from sodium? And a plus one aqueous plus Cl minus one aqueous. Na plus one aqueous, Cl minus one aqueous. If I had some water, I draw a lot of beakers, and I had a lump of NaCl solid, it would break up to Na plus one aqueous, Cl minus one aqueous. That's called ionization. Things going to their ions. Now, here's another species. You should spot that something different is going on because there's three different types of atoms. N-A-C-N. Three different types of atoms. If I have solid NaCN, and break it up in water. Na always breaks up to Na plus one aqueous. So this would be a beaker, some solid NaCn. It breaks up to Na plus one. This thing floats around as an ion by itself as Cn minus one aqueous. This is a polyatomic ion. 
That is a polyatomic ion. Now, what can we say about that? Well, first, carbon. Carbon is coal. I'm not terrified of carbon. I feel pretty good about carbon. Nitrogen, 80% of the air is nitrogen. I breathe that in, I'm not terrified of it. But together, these make something called cyanide. And cyanide, a couple milligrams will kill you. The polyatomics are interesting, but let's talk about it this way. If you remember my stairwell or the stairwell, I said to you, everything on this side, aside from hydrogen, is a metal. Those are the cations, all of them. The 8A elements, they're not going to react. They're neutral. So you only have a few atoms that could be anions, and that wouldn't be fair. Luckily, some of those few atoms get together and make polyatomic anions, mostly. Well, I'm going to make sure the camera's clear. Here's that periodic table. And if you notice, I must be the only person who records a lecture with a book camera, but boy, this is great. Should I actually autofocus it? That'd be fun. Wow. Okay, I have technology. These are your polyatomic ions that I Xeroxed back in, oh, I suppose 1991, as I said to you. If you'll notice on the first column, I think, there is a CN minus one cyanide. This thing is backwards in my picture, but it's probably forward in your picture. It's just called cyanide. If you notice, next to the cyanide, which is right on top of the cyanide, there's an OH minus one called a hydroxide. Now, all of your monoatomics, fluoride, chloride, bromide, they have ides. Those two have ides as well. Ox hydroxide or cyanide but then most of the other anions there's one cation in there we'll talk about but most of the other anions negative charged ones have an eight or they have an ite if they have an eight or an ite they're definitely polyatomics okay if they have an eight or an ite they're polyatomics so all your monoatomics will be ide Cyanide, hydroxide have ides, but all the rest of them are going to be eights and ites, and that means they're polyatomics. So now the board's mad. I know how to fix that. Something you can't do with the big cameras in these rooms. Thank God we have document cameras. Someday we'll get better cameras. So how do you name things with polyatomics? I'll put it this way. Metals to polyatomics. Naming metals to polyatomics. All rules the same except right the name of the anion exactly as you see it on that sheet. That's some pretty crappy uh, instructions there. But what I'm saying is, instead of saying, Fluoride, chloride, bromide, those things. If you have a polyatomic, CN, what's it called? It's right on that sheet, CN minus one. We used to have students memorize this before the pandemic. Now with the pandemic, we assume, I don't know, everything's changed. So now people don't have to memorize the language as much, but we have to know some of that language. It'd be nice if you knew what cyanide was. So I like to compare and contrast. So getting through naming things. Let's say I said calcium oxide. Write the cation, write the anion, cross it down. Calcium plus two, oxide minus two. Now, you don't write CA2O2. You say, well, they balance already. 
I'll just make those guys CAO and I'll feel good about myself. If I say calcium sulfate, don't put them homework on Friday because I need time. I got to do a lab tonight. I got to smelt lead with the with your traditional class. Okay, you guys get that little electronic thing to play with. Well, they're gonna actually make bullets or something. Calcium sulfate. Well, they won't make them with the bullets, but it's something to do. They get to use fire. Calcium sulfate. Calcium's a plus two. You see, well, I didn't write the L there, S-U-L. You see the eight, you're not in sulfide, which is S minus two. You're in the world of eight. In the world of eight, if you look up without having to refocus this camera 10 times, a sulfate, you're gonna find that it's SO4 minus two. Now, you look at it, they balance, CaSO4. That's the only correct formula for calcium sulfate. If a person tried calcium phosphate, phosphate Montana, remember that. It was, you guys are lucky here in this state if you're watching me from this state. Uh, when you drive and you have to use a service station, there's all these people who want to get money from you and you can pull over. In Montana, it's like the live free or die type state, 200 miles between towns. And when you drive by some towns, you look over the valley, there it is, and it says phosphate Montana, no services, which means, sure, we have you know, bathrooms and stuff, but don't stop here. So it's really different in the West. But phosphate Montana makes phosphate from calcium phosphate, I'm pretty sure. It's an important fertilizer. We'll learn about that. Plants are going to need nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay, don't skip to cross it down, stays. Calcium's a plus two. How do I know that? My periodic table is a 2A element. Phosphate, I'll look it up, PO4 minus three. They don't balance. If I had calcium phosphide, That would be Ca plus two and P minus three because the phosphide is right here. Crossing these down, Ca three P two, that would be the only formula of calcium phosphide. Calcium phosphate, I'll need three calciums, but then just like I needed two phosphides, I need two phosphates. I have to show that in brackets because that thing is not going to break up. That is the only time I use the bracket. And once I introduce the bracket, I start having troubles. Like if I say NaCl, sodium chloride, students start putting brackets around everything. Like aluminum chloride, AlCl3, you don't put brackets if you don't have a polyatomic, my friends. Okay, that's a very set. So all rules are the same. Let's say I gave you one and I said iron, I-R-O-N, three sulfate. So sulfite, let's do that. Iron three sulfite. If it's an ite or if it's an eight, that's going to become important. It's going to be a polyatomic. A sulfide is just S minus two. Sulfate is gonna be a minus two. Sulfide is gonna be minus two, and sulfite's gonna be a minus two, but the I means it's on this table. Don't skip the crossing down stage. Sulfite, I'll look for it, and it's SO3 minus two. That was an SO4 minus two. SO3 minus two. Now here's where a student often says, Iron, let me look for iron. The 1As are plus 1, the 2As are plus 2, aluminum's plus 3, but these change. Someone has to tell you what this is. Iron 3. That means Fe plus 3. So now you cross it down. I feel like I'm yelling. Fe2. I need three sulfites. SO3. Three, three. You can't get rid of this 3 here. There are three sulfites. 
That's kind of interesting right there. So going in the other direction. Let's say I had S N O two. I tell students, write your cation, write your anion, and then decide if the cation is a 1A, a 2A, aluminum, zinc, or silver. Your cation is 10. He's down here somewhere. Your anion is symbol oxide. So now you say, do I need a Roman numeral? It's a metal to a non-metal. Well, I look at my metal. Is it a 1A? Is 10 a 1A? No. Is it a 2A? No. Is it aluminum, zinc, or silver? No. It's over here, SN. And the stairwell means there's metals over here. So I have to use Roman numeral, but the Roman numeral doesn't tell me how many tins. It tells me the charge of 10. Now, if you're a student who says, well, you know, I've noticed I can uncross this. This is probably tin 2. Be careful with that. Figure out the charge of tin, because this is a neutral species altogether. There must be as much positive here as there is negative there. Oxide is a minus 2. You got a minus 2, but you got two of them. On this side, you got a minus 4. The opposite of minus 4 is plus 4, and there's only one tin here, so this is tin 4 oxide. If I wrote tin 4 oxide, you'd say Sn plus 4 O minus 2. You'll need two of these to balance him. It becomes SnO2. You're going to want to write Sn2O4, but it's all about just getting to the thing balanced. So you say to yourself, a well, plus 4 needs two of these minus 2s. I know, it's probably really hard. I can't tell. All right, so what can you name? Metals to non-metals, metals to polyatomics, and you know, hopefully at some point as you're studying, when to use Roman numerals. This one, AlCl3, aluminum chloride. We said it's not aluminum 3 chloride because aluminum always takes a plus three. But it's something else it's not, too. It's not aluminum trichloride. With metals, you're not allowed to use that tri. You're probably saying, well, I never thought to use a tri. Well, now I'm going to teach you something that we used to teach first, but now we teach second. Because the minute I teach it, you're going to want to start calling this aluminum trichloride, and you don't. I'll show you over here. Naming non-metals to non-metals. So naming these guys to each other. Just say how many of each atom and don't use mono with first atom. And that's going to seem a little weird. But I'll explain it. You're going to use prefixes for nominals to nominals. Some of these you know already. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, ah, that's not here, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. If you have one of something, it's mono. Two of something is die, three of something is try, but only you use this for nominals to nominals. 
So how do you know? N O X. If you were an environmental scientist, there's N O X pollution. Comes from cars, makes acid rain, burns your eyes. N O X. There's no atom with an X. There's N O. There's N2O, there's NO2, there's N2O5. There are so many different ways that nitrogen combines with oxygen. We're not even sure which one is out there. We just say NOx. But these all have to be named by students. N2O5. Nonmetal to nonmetal, use the dye tri system, dye nitrogen. Now, this next one I'd be fine however you do it, but you want to say pentaoxide, but it's just pentoxide. This system is so friendly, you just say how many of each with the Roman with uh, the prefixes. You just can't do it with metals, you're not allowed to. Let me show you two you know right away. Or at least I hope you know right away. This is your big greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide. There's your carbon dioxide. CO is the poisonous form. Comes from combustion engines. If you start up a car in a garage and you write a note to somebody and you die, it's a horrible thing to do. It's a way of dying of carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide gas. Carbon dioxide gas is a little cleaner, so we want to convert to carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, which are catalytic converter, which people are stealing from cars now. Okay? But you've never called this monocarbon monoxide. You instinctively know. I don't know how you do, but you know. I'm going to use mono, but not with the first atom, because I've never called it monocarbon monoxide. So over here, nitrogen monoxide. Dinitrogen monoxide. There are old names for this. This was nitric oxide. This is nitrous. That's laughing gas. You slightly suffocate, you fall down, and you laugh after it's over. That's the weirdest thing in the world. It's kind of quite dangerous, probably for brain cells. But nitrogen monoxide, dinitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, dinitrogen pentoxide, it's the NOx pairs. I mean, pairings. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Oh, look where I'm at right now. I have no idea. <sighs> So there's more to this. There's definitely more to this. But what can we name? We can name metals to nonmetals. We can name metals to polyatomics. And we can name nonmetals to nonmetals. That's as far as I got with my other class, the one that's in person, because they asked a lot of questions. And they should ask a lot of questions. They paid a lot of money for a professor to ask a lot of questions. You guys, you 40 people have been kind of quiet so far, but maybe you're just sailing right through. So I'm going to stop this second video short and uh, I'm going to be putting up homework and please do your labs. OK, don't have to be in a position where you're saying, can you turn the lab back on? I've got to just start getting you guys used to doing a certain amount of work every week. We have to prove that we can do online classes. OK, it's like a law. So that takes care of this. Whew. I'm going to stop my recording right now. Just stop recording.